The misrepresentation of the results is one issue, but why would you share the results of this paper when the design of the paper is what you would consider garbage regardless of the results of the paper and also not science? I truly wonder. What is going on guys? Today we have a huge video covering somebody that I think pretty much all of you are familiar with and that is the anti-vegan carnivore, Sean Baker. I wanna get a brief overview of who he is through a page I found on him on Rational Wiki. They seem to have exposed him on a variety of very sketchy things. For those who don't know, Rational Wiki is an online wiki whose stated goals are to analyze and refute pseudoscience and the anti-science movement, document crank ideas, explore conspiracy theories, authoritarianism, and fundamentalism, and analyze how these subjects are handled in the media. Now, to be clear, obviously myself as a vegan activist have a huge bias against Sean, as does the people who wrote this article. So the goal today is going to be reading this article while being as charitable as we can and fact checking the things being said and finding out if they are true and I'll be giving my own commentary as I see fit. I do have a video in the works with the Nutrivore covering studies shared by Sean Baker in favor of his lifestyle but that will be released at another time. I won't be reading everything in the article but I will still link the entire article in the pinned comment of this video. The article starts with a quote from Sean saying anecdotal evidence is still evidence and it is a hell of a lot more relevant to an individual than an epidemiological study. This quote is real. So I guess if somebody's anecdotal evidence suggests that they feel significantly better while smoking cigarettes, that anecdotal evidence is far more relevant to that individual than all of the epidemiological data that we have on smoking cigarettes. Solid stuff. Baker claims that if people are afraid of red meat or avoid it in their diet, then this is a sign of mental weakness and such people have been, quote, programmed by a secret cult that wants to control them. Here's the video of him saying this without the cult stuff. However, it could probably just be inferred. Don't be afraid of red meat. If you're afraid of red meat, it's a sign of mental weakness, in my view. It is a sign you are, you are, you are very um, susceptible to the programming. It's out there, and there is some programming. Uh, they want you eating processed slop, so they can control the food, they can control you, and it's not doing you any favors. So apparently myself avoiding red meat is a sign of mental weakness and that I am a victim of the programming. I think by programming, he just means the totality of evidence suggesting that we should minimize our red meat intake, but I'm not too sure. Baker believes that anecdotal evidence is more important than scientific research. While there wasn't a source for this part of the article, it is fair to say that this quote does reflect that this is true in specific contexts. You know, like when somebody's own anecdotal evidence suggests that they feel better smoking cigarettes despite what the epidemiology says about about smoking cigarettes and lung cancer. Several websites reported in 2018 that Baker was eating a strict all meat diet. This has now been disproven. In an obscure 2019 interview, Baker stated, I've been 98% carnivore since May 2018. So just so you guys understand that I am trying to be objective here, the authors of this article did make a giant error here. If you go to the source for this 98% carnivore since May 2018 claim, I found that the part of the source pertaining to this quote was actually from a female client of his. I told you guys, I'm trying to be charitable even to Sean Baker here. Let's now continue to some of the more juicy parts of the article concerning him losing his medical license. The New Mexico Medical Board ordered the quote, voluntary and permanent surrender of Baker's medical license in 2017. This action was based on failure to report adverse action taken by a healthcare entity and incompetence to practice as a licensee. This is true and here is the source. Baker claimed the reason he lost his license was because he opted to help his patients through lifestyle interventions rather than perform profitable surgeries for the hospital where he worked. As a result, the hospital where he worked did a review of his cases, which he called a sham. So here's what's interesting. The two YouTube videos cited for Sean Baker's defense of his license being taken away have been privated. You have to wonder why Sean would decide to private two videos defending himself concerning his license being taken. The only reason I can think of outside of Sean realizing he can get into trouble for misrepresenting his case is that he had his license reinstated in 2019. However, I know that if I was in his shoes, I would still keep the defense videos up in case anybody wanted to question my past losing of my license, but that's just me. After a little more digging, I did find an Instagram post of his giving his take on the case, and it pretty much was what the Rational Wiki article stated. Regardless, I'm so curious as to why the two videos were privated. I do wanna say that Sean Baker's anti-pharmaceutical rhetoric and whole, they just want your money type of messaging seems to align very well with his description of the story, suggesting that he was just trying to use more holistic measures for his patients rather than perform profitable surgeries, as he calls them. Anyway, I wanted to look further into his case 
case, but unfortunately the case files are sealed. Because of this, it's not really possible to corroborate Sean's claims as to why he had his medical license taken in the first place. And for those who don't know what failure to report adverse action taken by a healthcare entity could mean, here is some information straight from the National Practitioner Data Bank. It says, hospitals and other healthcare entities must report adverse clinical privileges actions to the NPDB that meet NPDB reporting criteria. That is, any professional review action that adversely affects the clinical privileges of a physician or a dentist for a period of more than 30 days, or the acceptance of the surrender of clinical privileges or any restriction of such privileges by a physician or dentist. While the physician or dentist is under investigation by a healthcare entity relating to possible incompetence or improper professional conduct, or in return for not conducting such an investigation or proceeding. Given what we know about why his license was taken, it seems the first example applies to Sean's case. He seems to have failed to report that he was under investigation by a healthcare entity concerning his possible incompetence to the National Practitioner Data Bank. Now, what led to him being considered incompetent to practice as a licensee is what we all really want to know. Though we have Sean's account, it is odd that he never decided to publicize the files related to his case. In my view, and in the view of the authors of this article, Sean deciding to not publicize the files related to his case is indicative of him potentially having something to hide. I was never able to find any law suggesting he is not allowed to publicize the details of his case. So assuming he is allowed to do so, why not just publicize the details of the case rather than have us just go by your word? Just something to think about. Let's now look into the section of the article concerning Sean's inconsistent criticisms toward epidemiological studies. I'm going to read this section and then we'll go over the evidence provided. Baker is known for his opposition to epidemiological studies studies, but in 2021 started supporting such studies if they are being done on the carnivore diet. I think they're referring to the Harvard carnivore diet study, but we'll get to that later. In 2017, Baker dismissed epidemiological studies as leading to massive bias and poor assumptions. In 2019, he gave a lecture called evidence-based nutrition with a question mark for the low carb down under event. Baker stated that epidemiological studies are useless because they cannot assert causation and have potential confounding factors. He said that no long-term randomized control trials have ever been done on human diets and that anecdotes of people eating meat-based diets are more reliable than epidemiological studies. In February 2020, he again criticized such studies for being inaccurate. So it is true that Sean Baker has shit on epidemiological studies in the past. Here is the first instance cited by the article. He even said in the lecture cited by the article that the notion that nutritional epidemiology is garbage and that we should throw it out is probably not far from the truth. Here's that clip. This is a quote from uh, Professor uh, John Anitis out of uh, Stanford University. He's one of the most uh, well-published uh, uh, public health uh, phys officials, uh, physicians out there. And, you know, this is a long statement that he made, and he, and he made it more elegantly than I do, but he basically says nutritional epidemiology is a bunch of garbage, and we should just start over and throw it out. And I mean, not that I totally suggest we do that, but it's probably not far from the truth. But throughout the video, I couldn't find him say, quote, anecdotes of people eating meat-based diets are more reliable than epidemiological studies. But I wouldn't be surprised if he actually thought that given that he has said epidemiology is garbage regardless of the result. He has even said that epidemiology studies are not science. These two quotes in particular will become all the more ironic when we look at the carnivore diet study he promotes later, which is epidemiology. But before we cover that, think of these two quotes, epidemiology is garbage regardless of the results and epidemiology is not science. As I share multiple instances of Sean Baker sharing epidemiology in favor of eating meat. Definitely a very consistent person. Let's now move on to the carnivore diet study section of the article, which includes information on him misrepresenting the results of the study, being corrected on the misrepresentation, and then deleting the initial tweet containing the misrepresentation entirely. In November, 2021, a Harvard study based on self-reported data from 2,229 adults was published for the first time on the carnivore diet. The study is essentially useless by Baker's own criteria as it was self-reported, taken from social media questionnaire among adults self-identifying as consuming a carnivore diet for up to six months. It was not a long-term study or controlled. Questionnaires are a commonly used tool in epidemiological studies, which Baker has criticized, but he had no problem with it being used in this case because the study was on the carnivore diet. So yep, 
Here is Sean promoting this paper, despite the many methodological limitations it contains, which Sean has criticized many times before in epidemiology not supporting his views. When speaking on the methodological limitations, the paper itself says, these findings must be interpreted cautiously in view of several major design limitations. Our survey assessed the perception of individuals following a carnivore diet. It did not objectively assess diet, nutrient status, health-related outcomes, or confounding health-associated behaviors, and no physiological or biochemical measurements were obtained. These self-reported data are prone to recall and reporting bias, especially for the pre-diet information. Specifically, participants may have started the diet during a time of poor health and perceived subsequent regression to the mean as a benefit of the diet and being online community members may have resulted in over-reporting of adherence and perceived beneficial effects. Because no validated instruments are available to assess food intake frequency in a carnivore population, we use modified Likert scales. We did not assess portion size or other quantity quantitative intake characteristics, nor did we use other dietary instruments for a more detailed characterization of the diet. These comprise topics of future investigations. Finally, the generalizability of the findings is unknown, owing to the existence of selection bias, because individuals who experience adverse effects or lack of health benefits are likely to have abandoned the diet and would therefore not have been captured in this survey. Adults adhering to a carnivore diet and responding to the survey online represent a special subpopulation with high levels of motivation and other health-related behaviors, like physical activity and consumption of relatively whole and unprocessed foods. Therefore, Respondents likely differ from the population in ways that could influence the effectiveness, practicality, and safety of a carnivore diet. Related to this point, we did not obtain detailed information on diet and lifestyle habits before beginning a carnivore diet. Well, that was a mouthful. And yeah, it's just very ironic that Sean Baker would still continue to promote this study when it has all of the limitations that he claims epidemiology tends to have. And it's literally epidemiology, and he says that epidemiology, regardless of the result, is garbage. So he's technically sharing garbage in his view in support of the carnivore diet. Just what? He's also sharing something that he considers not science to promote the carnivore diet. Because remember, he said epidemiology is not science. Now back to the article, Baker has since promoted the study on Twitter and his YouTube channel as making carnivore diet history and advertises it as some kind of scientific breakthrough. Here's those instances. Baker also claims he had personally pushed for the study to be done and was waiting for three years for it to happen. Baker has not talked about any of the limitations of the study, but continues to criticize epidemiology studies being done on plant-based diets as biased and useless. Baker's bias and contradictory beliefs about epidemiology studies were noticed by some of his Instagram and Twitter followers. Imagine having so many issues with epidemiology and its limitations, and then pushing for and spreading a paper with so many of these limitations. And imagine doing all of this out in the open. Just bizarre, really. What's even more bizarre is that Sean Baker is in the acknowledgments of the study for input developing the survey instruments and helping them with online distribution of the survey. Why would you help in the development of a study whose design, in your view, is garbage and not science in order to promote your diet. Back to the article, an alarming result of the study was the elevated LDLC in coronary artery calcification or a CAC score increase by almost 50%. However, Baker had misrepresented the results of the study on Twitter as decreasing CAC. Baker has since deleted his tweet. And yup, here is the original tweet which Sean Baker deleted, which suggested that the paper showed a reduction in coronary artery calcification. And here is the news report pointing out that this is just false. So before we end this video, let's be clear about something. Baker says that epidemiology is not science and is garbage regardless of the results. He then went on to help develop and promote an epidemiological study, in other words, in his view, a garbage study that is not science. And then when sharing the results of this garbage study, in his view, he actually misrepresents the results in regard to coronary artery calcification scores. The misrepresentation of the results is one issue, but why would you share the results of this paper when the design of the paper is what you would consider garbage regardless of the results of the paper and also not science. I truly wonder. Maybe he's just selective about when epidemiology is good or bad, and the selection is based on if the study supports his views. Amazing. Alrighty, guys, that is the end of the video. I have no idea how long this is gonna be, but from what I'm seeing right now on my recording thing, it seems like it's gonna be a 
quite long video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you support my work and want to get early access to it, you can click the link in the pinned comment and support me on Patreon. And if you don't know, I do have a book going over most, if not all, of the anti-vegan arguments you're going to hear online. If you want to get access to that as well, that'll be linked in the pinned comment. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Dude. Fuck off. I don't want anything to do with you. Don't ever speak to me again. You're a fucking piece of shit. Even vegans don't get your weird, stupid, wannabe sense of irony here. Who is your audience? Nobody gets these dumb jokes. Dude.